What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a bit of a digression um, and show you how you could build something um, using play that could be kind of useful. Um, so, uh, what we will do is we'll make a new file, new, uh, hello, there we go. Um, and this is going to be, um, what, what, I what I want to do ultimately with this patch is to use play to synchronise um, the start and end points or the, the playback of um, some loopable files. So for example, if I had uh, two um, beat-based sound files, um, one perhaps a rock um, sound file, or ro rock beat, and another one, uh, some other beat, um, and they aren't necessarily the same length, um, then you might want to synchronise them. And the play object will allow you to do that. Um, again, this, this is just a demonstration thing. I'm not necessarily proposing that you know this is something you'd uh, want to do. But for the purposes of your assignment, um, the, the variety of possibilities which might, you know, or that this is something which might uh, provoke thought and... Um, some ideas as to what you might want to do. Um, so we'll start with the play object um, and I'll tell it to read from a buffer called uh, I don't know um, buff1 um, and I'll tell it to have two channels um, and obviously in order to, for it to read back from a buffer called buff1 it ne there needs to be a buffer called buff1 um, and so, uh, by default, I'll make that one second long, although, um, obviously, I'm going to use the replace message to uh, resize that automatically. So, in fact, I don't really need to put in a um, an argument at all. Um, so, actually, I won't. So, in this instance, we could just leave the, uh, the buffer name as buff1 and not give it a, a size. Um... So there's, there's our buffer and, and there's our play object and we're actually going to get it to, um, to play back from there. And I'm thinking ahead a bit now um, because I want play to be able to play back a, uh, the, the sound file. I, I don't necessarily know how long the sound file is going to be because they may be different lengths, these two beat-based um, sound files. And I, I still want, you know, I, I don't... I, I don't know how long they're going to be, so I, I, I want them to be synchronised. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to add one of these, and I'll tell you why in a minute. And I'm going to add a multiplication object in between the line object that's actually going to tell it to play back and the play, play object itself. Actually, I'm going to move the whole lot over here for a minute. Obviously, I'm going to need an output for the... Uh, play object, so we'll send it to a um, an easy DAC. I might want to put a, a volume control in there, so if I want, if I was going to do that I'd use a gain object perhaps, and I'd need one for both channels. Um, well maybe I'll, maybe I'll pop that in. Oops. Get those up. And I'll duplicate that. And just in case I haven't mentioned this elsewhere, which I don't think I have yet, um, in order for those, because obviously we need a gain object for both channels, because we can't send the the uh, the outputs to the same one, because otherwise it would basically make the whole lot mono. Um, so what I can do in order to synchronise these, because obviously I'm gonna if I move this one, I've got to move this one by the same amount. Um, so to connect them from the right hand outlet to the left hand inlet I can use one of them to control both um, sides so if that helps okay um, and I'm going to tell line to read back and I'll tell you why in a bit I'm going to tell it back to read from 0 to 1 over and for the moment I'll say 8 seconds So the eight seconds at the end is referring to how long I want the um, sound file to 
play four, or both sound files to play four, at least in their loop. Um, <clears throat> and for some reason I'm counting from zero to one. The reason for that is because um, what I can do is, let's, uh, let's load something into the buffer object, first of all. Um, so I'm going to use replace dollar one, and if you remember what the dollar one stands for, and you remember, because uh, I think I've introduced this before, the uh, drop file object, you should remember that if I drop a file into the, the uh, drop file object, it goes through the replace dollar one, replaces the dollar one there, so uh, we will the message that comes out of this object here will be replace and then the file path for the sound we want to load. So I will load a sound. Let me just find one. Uh, we will load. Actually, I want beats, don't I? So let's go and find a, something with some beats in it. Logic beats. There we go. So I've, I'm afraid I've purloined a bunch of um, beats from uh, Logic. Thank you, Logic. Let's just check this. Six minutes. Um, and I'll drop in a classic rock beat. Um, and so in our buffer now, we should have a two-channel file with just over well, about seven seconds worth of um, uh, sound in it. Um, and remember that the replace object has has um, changed the length of our buffer, which originally was no no length at all because we didn't put in an argument, and added uh, and given it as many channels as it needs. So it's um, uh, basically changed the size of the buffer in order to accommodate what's being imported. Um, so we know that the sound is about seven seconds in length. And so if I were to multiply line, <coughs> the output of line, which is going to be from zero to one, by, say, seven seconds, then if it's zero, then line is going to come, what it comes out of there is going to be zero. So we're going to be at the beginning of the file. If it's 0 0.5, it's going to be about 3,500, uh, 3, 3, which is going to play, uh, which is going to be in the middle of the file. And if it's 1, it'll be 7,000, which is going to be at the end of the file. So by multiplying it by the length of the file, although, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of guessing it's about 7,000, but by, le by multiplying it by the length of the file, um, then 0 to 1 is going to give us 0 to 7,000 and therefore play back through the file. So that's kind of a cunning way of doing that, uh, I hope. Um, so in fact, if I play this back now, we should get... Okay, we should get the uh, line essentially reading from zero to 7,000 over 8,000 seconds. So it's. Uh, milliseconds, sorry. So it's going to, it's actually going to play it slightly slower than it should be. Um, but it will play it back, as you heard. Um, but, like I say, I don't actually know the exact length of the file, because I'm guessing from what we've got here. So how might I find out the, the proper length of the file? 